Well, today we're looking at the Mercedes-Benz GLA 254 Matic. This is the new entry-level crossover vehicle from Mercedes-Benz that's getting a lot of attention. I had a chance to drive this vehicle about a year ago in Spain, and uh, I got a chance to drive it many months before it was available here in the Canadian marketplace, and it's been one of my most successful videos over the last year. Hundreds of thousands of people have watched this because it's a new entry from Mercedes-Benz, certainly a lot of interest in this product. So what is the GLA? It's basically part of the small family of vehicles that have come out from Mercedes-Benz. We've got the new B-Class, we've got the CLA sedan, and this one kind of falls in between the two. So the B-Class is the taller hatchback looking vehicle, the CLA is the sweeping looking sedan, and this one straddles the two. It's a crossover vehicle that's hitting in the sweet spot of the Canadian marketplace. So many people are buying these small crossover vehicles. The hatch around the back is a useful size, but not as tall as the B-Class, which compromises how much stuff you can get in there. Now on the inside, we'll walk through the similarities of the vehicles, and then we'll get to the price. Now whether you're looking at the B-Class, the CLA sedan, or this GLA crossover, Mercedes-Benz really wants you to spend $3,800 more to get the premium package, because that package has all the features that most people are going to want to buy. So what do you get? What are the main things you get for your $3,800? First of all, you get navigation with the bigger screen in the center of the console. You get automatic climate control, which is definitely worth it. You get a backup camera, and you get the big panoramic roof that I have here. So that's $3,800 more. Then you might want to add on the Sport Package, which this car does not have. Uh, that would get you 19-inch AMG wheels, an AMG appearance package. Uh, the other thing you might want to consider is for $2,000, the Premium Plus Pack, which gets you the power tailgate, the bi -Xenon headlights, and the media interface. So once you start adding all these features on, this less expensive crossover starts to become expensive. And that's one of the reasons why I think the B-Class might be a better overall buy if you're looking at dollars and cents. But this car isn't about dollars and cents, it's about style, and that's why it exists. It's got the lower roof line, but it's still quite practical in the back seat. You can get back there. It's not as claustrophobic and tight feeling as the CLA sedan, but not open and airy like the B-Class. It's somewhere in the middle and for most people it'll be just fine. The cargo area is a useful size. It's a comfortable cabin but all of them are the same up front. They have the exact same layout so it depends which one you want. You want the sedan, you want the hatch, or you want this crossover. And under the hood it's no different. So the three vehicles based on the small vehicle platform the Mercedes-Benz uses and all of them have the same engine. It's a two-liter direct injection turbocharged unit that's high-tech stuff, 208 horsepower and it really is a nice match for this size of vehicle. I don't think it's really lacking in power there. And that goes through a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission. And in the case of this vehicle, standard 4Matic all wheel drive system. Now you can get the 4Matic on the B class. Uh, the transmission really needs, as soon as you get in the car, to hit the sport button. Because if you leave it in the default economy mode, it's just a little too lazy and too laid back for any kind of quick maneuvers. Put it in sport, that makes it much better. You put it in manual mode, hit the button again. Yeah, you can change the gears with the paddle shifters here, but they're not as quick as, say, Volkswagen's DSG system, which when you put it in its sportiest mode, really can be uh, extra crisp. This is a smooth and refined transmission, but it doesn't feel as precise as, say, uh, the DSG from Volkswagen. A lot of people are asking on the comments, what do you think of, say, a Mercedes versus a Golf? Uh, for maybe a little bit less money. And they're very different vehicles. This one definitely has a more relaxed feel to it than you would with, say, a Golf R from Volkswagen. All right, the suspension is very different depending on which model you get. If you get the CLA, the ride is quite choppy. The B-Class is the most compliant of the bunch, and this one straddles the middle. And I actually like the way this one feels. It has a bit more truckiness because you have the bulges on the hood, makes you feel like you're driving a crossover vehicle. The crop roof makes it feel sportier, so it, it really is a style equation here and exactly what you want. They're all very nice vehicles to drive. Uh, are they the most crisp and dynamic in the bunch? No, Mercedes wants you to step up and get the AMG to get all of that. But if you do get the AMG, they can be really a lot of fun with 355 horsepower. This is a nice vehicle to drive every day, day in, day out. It's the price that's the question.
Now, one of the issues I have with the GLA is the price. It starts at just over $37,000. It comes standard with 4MATIC, but when you look at the B-Class with 4MATIC, it's about a $3,700 premium to get this GLA. So you're really paying for style. It isn't as practical as the B-Class, but it certainly is sleeker looking and is hitting into that small crossover segment. Then you add in a lot of the features. For example, it costs $1,700 to get the Sport Pack, you pay $3,800 to get the premium package, $2,000 to get premium plus, and then there's add-on, single add-on features like Park Assist for $900 and Sat Radio for $475. So what I did is I compared two vehicles with equal equipment, GLA fully equipped and the B-Class fully equipped. Well, the GLA comes in at around $46,000 and the B-Class just under 40, so it's about a $6,000 premium to get this vehicle over the B-Class, and that's one of the reasons why I think the smart money really is on the B-Class. It comes down to style. Are you willing to pay about $6,000 more to get a fully loaded GLA 254 Matic over the B-Class so you can drive around in something a little bit more stylish? Yes, there will be people that will take that and run with it. Me, personally, I think the B-Class is a fine vehicle for the price.